We're going to be talking about hybrid cloud going into SCADA. Are we ready to it? Of course, there's a bit of condescending attitude to clouds. Let us start with a brief. What is a hybrid cloud? Let, I would love to say once more that I do need to explain certain very basic terms because people have very different understanding of them. So hybrid cloud is, as a matter of fact, a combination of a private cloud, as you might see here in the image, virtualized um, or non-virtualized platform where there are physical service that provides certain terminal services, that could become a private cloud as well. So it's some remote location uh, as opposed to primary infrastructure of the uh, enterprise, and it is not in the main perimeter of the company. So that is called private cloud. Of course, there are internal and outside users that use that cloud. So public cloud is just all the same, but it's the cloud that is managed by some third party. And here's the example of Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Service. Of course, there are local vendors of public cloud. There are many of them in Russia. And of course, hybrid cloud is the uh, approach when the client uses both infrastructures, both private cloud and public cloud. Together, that is called a hybrid cloud. And that is the most hyped model at the moment in terms of development of infrastructure because if you need some extra capacity, you could easily get them from the public cloud. If we talk about using that with SCADA, of course, SCADA is a matter of fact, the framework of uh, SCADA is in a way hybrid because uh, the framework of uh, SCADA is uh, separated from corporate network. And in our ERP system is in most cases in the cloud outside of framework of SCADA, and that is all supplied as a service. So mostly all of these things are even in a different geography. I would love to say now about what we are going to be concentrating today and talk about all the possible scenarios. The most widely known is, of course, uh, factory Internet of Things, when the field level of controllers has certain connectivity via Internet or cloud platform. And, of course, classical approach for um, Internet uh, and production, that is some predictive analytics, uh, sometimes duplicating the function of SCADA. Sometimes people bravely say that centralized SCADA will soon will be redundant because it will be just enough to deploy this kind of connectivity in the field. But of course, that is a kind of a visionary approach. There's also approach when the centralization of the SCADA goes into the cloud, SCADA as a service. And again, based on our uh, experience in Russia, this is a very, very rare beast. I will tell you about how this looks a bit later. However, there's this kind of example as well. And of course, to make this image more comprehensive, if we speak about cloud in the framework of uh, SCADA, of course, we should or mention the level when uh, the situation when a certain level of SCADA is virtualized. Every controllers are visual, uh, virtualized. So that is software defined networks, of course, a rare beast all over the world. But they say this is the, where we're going because, in the end, this will allow us to uh, get rid of hardware controllers and just do that through the software. And IT commodity will come there as technology. So in Russia, in Kaspersky Club, there is one particular client who virtualized SCADA, and this is super amazing. And this is for us the example of progressive technologies. But when we work with these kind of clients, we get to the question, what kind of products we should use to protect the client? We have Kaspersky Industrial Cybersecurity for classic SCADA system. And of course, it bottoms down to levels below. And of course, there is a product for virtualization, which is very well integrated into VMware and allows protecting the um, applicable level of um, Mm, virtual machines through native layers of a VMware. Of course, industrial Internet of Things 
is differentiated at the level of controllers or just the field level, which is connected to external platform through internet connection. Now, we're often talking about lower networks. Uh, this is a new generation of internet connection, which allows connecting devices, the tiniest devices. They actively introduced this technology in Russia. You saw probably this at the keynote, 4.0 RU. They have been telling about the connected machines at the workshop about the connecting machine tools. So this SCADA that is connected to the cloud outside of the traditional framework of SCADA. So if you speak about SCADA as a service, here there could be two types of architecture. First, architecture is the example when SCADA as the application remains within the framework and of course, it only pushes information. Usually, this is logging at the upper level. And of course, in my understanding, this is not a classical cloud solution because uh, this is the technology that most of the clients deploy at the moment. For example, history servers are much easier to be stored in the cloud because this is where uh, you can automatically manage the databases. You have unlimited space, uh, storage. It is easy to manage historian and plant information. These kind of data usually uh, go from uh, SCADA into the cloud. But many people call this SCADA as a service. I believe that classical SCADA as a service when the entire complex of SCADA components goes into the cloud. So all the um, all the telemetrics, they just go outside of SCADA and being pushed into the cloud. This is a brave infrastructure for, for Russia. I will ask the SCADA vendors in the future about this. Vendors that provide, there are vendors that provide SCADA as a service. And again, they do not work in Russia, but there are vendors like that. And let us talk about the architecture. It is relatively classic. These guys offer the following solutions. Uh, special special kinds of um, hubs with a scatter cloud and all the information at the level of proprietary protocols is actually put into the TLS package and sat into the SCADA cloud. Then you connect to outstanding business system through the SCADA cloud. If we look at the industrial internet of things, it's all the same. We connect the gate, which connects data from the sensors, from the controllers. There's, it's not rocket science. It's native technology at the moment. If you recall again the presentation of the guys from 4.0, they use just the gates from uh, Siemens and they directly connect into their machines, industrial machines. If we talk about the advantages of SCADA as a service, which nobody is using at the moment, I think there are no advantages for Russian clients in this, but there are. They're mostly connected to classical cloud IT advantages. First and foremost, this is the support of the SCADA environment. So when we are talking about classical centralized SCADA, which is in the framework, it needs to be support. This is patching for the operating system. Usually, these are the mostly obsolete system. This is, of course, uh, patching and updating the SCADA service, and of course, updating security, of course, that need to be delivered and managed. You can easily automate that in the cloud. Usually, mm, uh, clients are subscribed on a certain cloud model, and they don't need to think about anything. Next advantage is information logging. As I have said, there are configurations when SCADA sends its information into historian, which is in the cloud. And as a matter of fact, that usually is the extra option, uh, which comes as a bundle of SCADA service in a purchase. But in the cloud, this is a native functionality. So you don't need to manage databases. and. Uh, the storage is not limited. So you pay a certain uh, affordable sum of money for that. 
and a larger historian space on an ongoing basis. This can be the protection of the base of information, which might not be critical for certain enterprises, but when your data is in the cloud, you know that it will not go anywhere. So backup is also part of the service. Cloud providers and providers of SCADA as a service also take charge of backing up. So when all of these things are in your framework, you need, again, to figure out certain backup for yourself. Speaking about cybersecurity, something that we really, really love. So when SCADA is centralized, of course, uh, you um, bear all the responsibility. So you should install Kaspersky cybersecurity, industrial cybersecurity, and then manage it, or something else, of course. But when SCADA is in the cloud, that means that certain magic is happening and cloud is protected. But as a matter of fact, that is not true. We shall be speaking about it in more detail later. But key protection is that, again, as I have said, we have encrypted channel and vendor assures protection of the cloud that way. And the last advantage is extra features reporting system, convenient interface. These are different kinds of alerts. Again, for SCADA or cloud services, as in many web services, it's just better and more convenient. Now, speaking about the model of threats, if we speak about this briefly, I believe that when we represent a cloud service, or function within a cloud service. This is all about the extension of the surface of attack. I don't mean to say that you should not use it. It's just that it's a bit easier to hack you than it used to be before if you have been protecting your perimeter correctly. So the first threat, of course, uh, related to cloud services is the loss of control. So if at the level of SCADA you have certain critical information and as really you need to actively control it, when you transfer that into the cloud, you uh, give up certain degree of control over that information. And of course, you're very dependent on the provider of the cloud. That, of course, increases the surface of the attack. This is obvious when we are talking about going into the web interface or native web technologies. We see the entire new class of web application attacks, uh, and there you need specialized technologies of protection. And of course, there's no guarantee that your cloud provider is using a uh, web uh, application firewall in a correct way. And of course, if SCADA in the cloud works in a decent way and it uses pool technology, that means that you need always to have ports open uh, at your borderline. They need to be able to get commands from the client. And of course, that increases the risk of an attack. And the approach in general, which, what is called shared infrastructure in English. So when there are different kinds of clients using one infrastructure, for example, as with uh, Microsoft Azure or uh, Amazon Web Services, it means that the authentication methods should be very, very well. The service has to be publicly available, but if it's publicly available, uh, the hacker can just get into there and steal your credentials, getting the access to infrastructure. There are cases with Amazon Web Service when because of bad configuration, the client led to the fact that some information at its public machines was uh, available. So it was indexed by a search engine. So you could easily uh, search on the web for the information that was in a private database. The story that I'm telling now is first and foremost about a service that is called software as a service, app as a service. There are other ways to use this. There's platform as a service, again, mostly used for development environment, and there's also infrastructure as a service. And when infrastructure is, again, software-based and software-defined, and it costs really little money, theoretically, this can be applied for uh, building SCADA. But Nobody has been able to see these kind of cases. Let me explain why. When the user purchases infrastructure as a service, for example, at Amazon Web Services, there is a model of shared responsibility. 
means that Amazon is in charge of the security of the infrastructure. That is level of virtualization, uh, computation power, physical centers of mm, data processing, of computation. The clients have full access at the level of virtual machines. So just the same as working with the real machine. There's the operating system that needs to be configured. There, you need to set up connectivity between virtual machines. You need, to, of course, to install apps on the platform and then of course, um, launch all of your services that, that you need to, that you need these machines for. Then we're talking about debugging the SCADA in the cloud, about deployment SCADA from the ground up in the cloud. And of course, colleagues have been talking about the fact that SCADA is very slow to update. Often the technologies are legacy and incompatible with contemporary virtualization solutions, which are widely used in public cloud. So nobody can guarantee that when you uh, uh, inst uh, uh, launch the machine at Amazon Web Services, things will be working well with other virtual machines. This is a complex set of tasks, and uh, I have not seen them executed well. However, infrastructure as a service is a very, very convenient approach for other IT tasks. And summing up, I can say that uh, hybrid cloud today is used with SCADA because of the specifics, because of course um, uh, SCADA is always an isolated framework. Of course, SCADA is a promote, uh, industrial internet. This is a virtualization of SCADA network. SCADA is a service that I have mentioned. And uh, I believe a separate sub-example is solutions for SCADA security that are in the cloud, that use cloud technologies. For example, Kaspersky Industrial Cyber Security has been having this idea for a long time to put this all into the cloud and remove the responsibility and the load of protecting the network from the shoulders of the client. Another curious example from Microsoft, uh, their uh, latest Ganover Messe, they have announced about uh, the launch, launch, launch of Microsoft Trusted Physical System, again, for, for the protection of industrial environments. So they have been using Microsoft Azure Cloud to process information about incidents in the cloud. However, the incidents are in the industrial environment. Again, summing up the things that we heard about SCADA as a service, then generally the conclusion, uh, the answer to the question uh, why we need it is of course evident. This is for SMEs, this is for situations when you build business from the ground up in greenfield, so-called. Of course, 95% of industrial organizations in Russia are well established. That is why we don't meet SCADA as a service a lot in Russia. And of course, SCADA as a service indeed suggests significant advantages as opposed to classic infrastructure. But again, the surface of attack, the closed infrastructure, but again, the surface of attack is much bigger. So all of these details and programs, problems are, of course, pretty much theoretical and abstract when we're discussing the use of cloud for uh, SCADA. But the community is moving on. There's the so-called Cloud Security Alliance organization, which um, includes different kinds of vendors. Kaspersky Lab is also the part of uh, this organization. And recently, they have loaded this working group for ICS security in the cloud, discussing all of the issues that I have discussed with you now. So it's easy to find uh, this organization. Of course, you see the web, web address. But if you want to become the part of the working group, you do not need to be the member of the Cloud Security Alliance. Any of you can join their work. They have not begun the work yet. I have just become the member of the working group. Starting with July, we've been able to build up the group. And now we're discussing certain frameworks of what we are going to do and how we're going to structure protection for uh, SCADA um, work uh, in the cloud. Thank you very much.